ready to roll with uh, Sven and uh, some of our fair Linux guys. So Sven! Yes! Bonjour! <laughs> Bonjour, James. <laughs> How are you doing? Good. I hope, uh, I, I'm sorry you have to follow that. <laughs> I was not expecting that. <laughs> no, no, I, I must uh, be clear from the beginning. We are not going to sing anything. <laughs> What? Because <laughs> we are just uh, IT people. Why not? <laughs> well, yeah, every session beforehand was a song, so you kind of have to now. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a very bad singer, and uh, I'm, I'm just checking uh, all the, the people that are uh, joining me uh, here uh, in, the, in the room, and uh, I'm not sure they want to sing anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. You don't have to sing. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, so welcome. Uh, why don't you um, go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, the rest of the team and um, what you guys are doing. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, is the sound and the video uh, clear? Is this yeah, it's extremely clear and awesome. Okay, so. okay excellent. Uh, well, I'm, I'm very happy to be able to, uh, to have the opportunity to join that, uh, that uh, one day library. Uh, I, I, I was listening to uh, and, and looking at the video uh, this morning, I, I learned a lot about LOUI and uh, JSF, and uh, it's it's really great. Um, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is uh, Sven Berlin. Um, I'm uh, the vice president of the Department Enterprise Solutions uh, for a company uh, called uh, Sourfare Linux, uh, based in Canada, in Montreal. So we are mainly uh, French speakers, uh, but uh, we are, of course, in Canada. Well, not not in that room. We have a, a lot of our developers are are also English uh, native speakers. Uh, so I, I'm going to uh, quickly uh, go <laughs> and and show the team. Uh, I have uh, here Seven, uh, Julien. Uh, we have Marat, Dimitri, uh, Julien, and uh, from uh, our uh, su support and infrastructure team here, we have a. Uh, uh, Marcos, and uh, well, you can see our office uh, behind me. Uh, I'm not sure if you, you can uh, see uh, that much, but uh, well, I, I cannot move the computer. Uh, uh, that I would so call that the uh, the fishbowl. The what? Fish, the, uh, fishbowl, like because you got all the glass, and so you're all sitting inside of a fishbowl. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it's the training room actually. <laughs> no, it's not the fishbowl. <laughs> There's no water in it. <laughs> No, not yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, what about us? Well, we are the company is uh, is really uh, open source oriented. Uh, we uh, well in my department uh, we are mainly uh, doing uh, library development, uh, support, uh, training, and uh, uh, coaching on library. Um, and uh, but we uh, we have two other departments. Uh, one department dedicated to. Uh, uh, um, um, let's see, uh, embedded uh, Linux, so uh, Linux drivers uh, like uh, kernel, kernel development, Android development, and we have a big uh, team about 20 people uh, uh, doing support, uh, not only library but uh, also like uh, Linux, uh, Red Hat, and uh, everything like like that. So, well, what I wanted to actually, I wanted to show you something uh, uh, today. Uh, it's a uh, uh, it's a plugin we have developed uh, over the past uh, two years, so it took us uh, a, f a few weeks. Uh, we we couldn't contribute it to the marketplace yet because of some uh, restriction on uh, uh, the permission system, I think. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, we talked about that already. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's available actually. Though it's it's open source. Uh, the source code is available uh, uh, on our uh, website and. Um, and anyone can download it and uh, package it and, uh, and install it on uh, their awesome. That's great. Six dot one. And as soon as the marketplace will be ready for uh, for for us to uh, to, be, to publish it, then I will do it. Of course, it's it's a mix. Actually, it's an integration of uh, I don't know if you know the the uh, another great open source uh, product which is called Talen. It's an ETL. Uh, product that let actually build any kind of processes for uh, taking some data from a database from from a file or whatever and pushing that to to some other place could be email could be Excel sheet could be whatever uh, is is we, uh, uh, whatever uh, the people want um, and um, actually what's very interesting is uh, uh, that uh, that product comes with a designer and uh, let you design a, a process. 
And uh, by using it on library, you, you can execute uh, uh, those processes uh, directly from library, schedule it. So that's <clears throat> what I wanted to show you to, uh, uh, for, the, for the next uh, 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be great. And this okay. is all open source, you said? Uh, yeah, everything is open source, yes. Talent is a uh, GPL. Uh, also, there's an open source version. And uh, our plugin is uh, GPL. Uh, and of course, library is uh, open source. Nice. Uh, so I'm sharing the screen now. Look. Can you see the screen? Yep, I can. Okay, so I'm. That's a a, a, a vanilla version of library. Uh, I have not installed anything else than uh, than uh, the default package, uh, the library bundle, and uh, our uh, plugin. And on uh, my other uh, screen, I have uh, that's the ETL, so the Talent ETL uh, project. So I, I'm I'm here in a well. I'm going to deploy a very simple uh, process that just uh, generates uh, uh, ten uh, first names randomly and print prints it uh, into the console. Uh, so if I execute that. Uh, that process, you can see it. Uh, well, the resolution is not that high, uh, but you see it here. Hello, uh, and all the first names. So the yep. ten random first names. So <clears throat> that tool is extremely powerful. It has connectors to all the databases: uh, of Salesforce, uh, uh, CSV, Excel sheets, uh, uh, a lot of uh, connectors. And now I can I can export that job into a zip file. So that's part of uh, uh, Talent. And okay, if I go back to Lifery, now uh, the plugin uh, uh, I have installed is uh, appears here on the server, ETL processes. Uh, so it's a very uh, simple uh, interface. Uh, we can add processes, we can schedule jobs, and we can see all the jobs that have been executed in the past. So the first thing I have to do is import the process I've just shown you before. It asks, it prompts for uh, for that for the zip file I've just generated before. Import. Now it appears here in the list of uh, processes uh, that have been imported into library. And uh, from the action button, I can uh, execute that job or schedule it uh, using uh, the, uh, the, well, the embedded uh, scheduler of library. Uh, delete or edit that uh, that process. If I execute it, well, it will just tell me that it was successfully executed. Uh, I can see in the history tab that it was executed at uh, well, the uh, the time is not correct. Uh, it was not uh, correctly configured for my server, but uh, you see the date, you see the status, uh, and if I click on it, I see a bit more details. What's interesting is the result. So what was printed in, into the console is actually kept, and I can look at it. So <clears throat> that example is probably not very interesting uh, in terms of uh, in terms of a business of what it uh, produces, uh, I have another uh, very uh, simple example: a reporting process. Uh, you see, it reads actually from the library user database. Nice. That's exactly what I was going to ask. Then it there is a mapping tool that will take some of the fields. You see, it's very convenient the way you can uh, you can manage that. And basically, it's, it's, it would be very useful for importing some things. So here, I'm taking the first name, the last name, uh, into my uh, output uh, flow. And uh, well, there's a, I'm just ignoring uh, some of the use, system users that have no first name, last name. Uh, and I'm taking also the well, the, the query also takes the um, actually, it's not group, it's it's roles. So it, it takes all the users with their roles. Uh, so I will have multiple lines for, for the same user, of course. But Talent has a nice box that will normalize the uh, here. Actually, it's, it grew, it's uh, roles. Uh, so it will take multiple lines and and put, uh, merge them into one. 
and at the end it it just writes an Excel sheet on the uh, so it's it's really Excel. It's not a CSV or it it can be uh, it's it's the property format uh, Excel uh, that uh, most of the customer are, are looking for. And uh, you just provide the name, and uh, you can even uh, write into different uh, sheets. Uh, so if I'm exporting that job, same way I uh, I did it before for, uh, for the Hello World process, I can go back here into library, import that process. So I have now my report process here. I can run it. It says OK. And if I go into the history, uh, well, I see everything is fine. Well, now, of course, I have to go back to my system to see the file that was created. But of course, if it is executed on the server, you don't have access to that file directly, except if you have a FTP account or something like that. But you can easily, in Thailand, configure it to send that file by email to somebody uh, uh, you want, like your customer. Or, and you, s you see now that, that this is my uh, Excel sheet with the first name, last name, and well, that must be uh, roles. So you see there is one test user that has an administrator role, power user, user, and uh, my user that, uh, that is not administrator. Uh, I, c I can uh, do a quick test by creating a new role. Uh, and I will assign that role to uh, to my user. So now if I go back to my ETL process and run it again, And refresh my my file. I see uh, that that role is there. So it's very, nice. in our case, it's it's very frequent that uh, we need to import some uh, some data. We well, most of the time uh, uh, customers are uh, looking for reporting uh, reports based on the on the data that is available in Library, and Library has a lot of data, including uh, what was the last time. Um, the the user was connected, uh, the creation date, uh, and so on. And uh, th this data is not always available. Uh, like the auditing uh, auditing uh, plugin that is available with the EE version uh, is nice, but uh, there is no reporting uh, report uh, based on that. So it's very easy to uh, to generate uh, to design uh, a process with Talon and to schedule it. Uh, for example, here schedule job. You can say execute every week, and uh, okay on on Sunday. And if your process includes a sending by email function uh, box, then uh, your customer or your user administrator is going to uh, will will get a, a that report by email every Sunday. So I have a question for you. Uh, you mentioned the uh, the talent has connectors. Uh, like database connectors, which I think is what you used in that example. Yes. Uh, can you also write your own connectors? Like, for example, if I wanted to write a connector that uses the Liferay user API to get users out instead of a direct database? Yeah, that's that's uh, actually very interesting. Is uh, uh, because the, that process is ex executed on the Liferay server. It uh, within the the same context it can actually call the API of Liferay. So you can import from, uh, let's say, an Excel sheet and uh, call the uh, user service local, uh, I don't remember. The add it. user. Yes, an add user. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we made fun of that earlier on the call. We made fun of that API because it's like 15,000 parameters to the add user. But Well, yeah, yeah. It, yeah I'm not saying it's, it's very easy. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> if you know uh, the the API very well, you can you can do it. So there is um, a connector that is called uh, T Java Row, and uh, that connector uh, where is it? If I put here on my process, oh, that's awesome. 
can connect both uh, boxes. And now you see here, there's a code, code sample, uh, output row, equal, well, in our case, it's input row that interests us. So I could call uh, this um, user service uh, dot add user and input row dot first name and so on. So I, I could I could execute that. It's uh, it's a bit uh, complicated to test because you cannot test it from talent because you don't have the context context and everything. But uh, if you know exactly uh, the the interface uh, and the parameters you have to send, you can test it from the uh, the. Uh... What's it called? The execution script executor. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. And for a uh, control panel. Uh, and and you you could technically you could even develop your own connector. Uh, so that's uh, the very generic one, Java row. You can write any Java code there. Uh, but you uh, you can also include the libraries, of course. You can have a, you can include a, some uh, uh, wrappers. Over the uh, library uh, libraries, such it's easier to use the service, um, um, and but you you can write your own uh, connector and it will appear in into that list. So if you, if you, that would be a good uh, improvement on the, yeah, the uh, plugin. Cool. Uh, so we have a little bit of uh, a game for you guys. I don't know if you if you have anything else you want to present, but. Uh... No, that, that was a quick overview okay. of uh, what we have done uh, recently. Uh, the, the good thing is uh, we, as an open source company, all the projects we are working uh, on, um, uh, we by default, the license is GPL, so technically we can contribute a lot. So when the customer uh, uh, allows us, we try to, uh, to, to, to build a, or to, to contribute a module. Uh, so um, so uh, we were very... Uh, uh, happy to uh, when when the marketplace was was finally released uh, because it gave us uh, the opportunity to uh, to to pro to contribute uh, more modules. So uh, we we're working on that. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we can't wait to see the already released marketplace. Uh, I mean, th so there are apps there now, as you know, but um, there's some issues with uh, with Packle and with a couple other things that prevent some apps from being able to be published. So we're working through those. Hopefully, with the GA3 release, everything will be. Smooth sailing. Um, I want to ask you guys one more question. Um, so you're you're pretty active in other open source communities as well. I was wondering if you could talk about uh, compare LifeRay to I don't know Python, for example. Uh, well, that yes, um, uh, we we are actually contributing on also on other uh, communities, uh, mainly the kernel Drupal as well. Uh, Liferay, that's the, and Open ERP, that's the the most uh, yeah the uh, the biggest project we are contributing, and we was we do have also two projects that are open source. Uh, one is called SFL Phone, which is a soft phone uh, we are developing uh, and which runs on on Linux and Windows as well. I think uh, the I think uh, the Liferay community is is really also. Awesome because uh, because of you first <laughs> as a community <laughs> manager. Yeah, uh, unnecessary, but uh, thank you. No, no, but really because you're organi organizing uh, events, you're uh, you're also uh, helping people to uh, to contribute to uh, to build teams. Uh, uh, this uh, the entire user group thing. Uh, uh, it's it's great actually. Uh, and and Liferay is supporting that, offering a place where people can uh, uh, write blog entries um, and 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 also contribute on the product. Uh, that is a bit different on others. Uh, the community on Drupal is very uh, big, so there are probably a lot more contributions than on Liferay. Yeah, a lot more developers. Yeah, a lot more uh, developers uh, as well. Well, it's it's also because. Um, well, PHP is a bit uh, uh, is a bit easier to uh, to use, and Liferay as a as a portal is uh, is is also heavier than uh, Drupal. Uh, but it's also the, the the disadvantage you will have on that is that you you have so many modules, and most of them are not maintained anymore. It's very difficult for a company to know which module to use because for one single feature you will have ten or twenty different uh, Existing modules, 
Uh, so on, yeah, that's that's the disadvantage of uh, such a big community. And in library, what I like is um, uh, I have the impression I, I I don't know exactly how library uh, is working, but as soon as one feature which was contributed is very interesting, library is taking that over and integrating it uh, into into the core, so into the uh, library, and then supporting it. So it makes uh, it makes the product uh, more robust. Yeah, that's the benefit of the commercial open source. But uh, we don't do that for every single idea. In fact, that's one of the reasons why we have the uh, ideation dashboard, uh, because we can't think of any as many great ideas as you can. But we also don't have time or don't have the resources to implement every single great idea, even though we would really like to. So it's a good way to uh, to empower the rest of the community to not only generate ideas but get ideas for implementation so if somebody yeah. comes along and wants to make you know a bunch of money or wants to just develop something uh, that they feel will be used a lot so they can go look at the most highly rated idea and implement it so yeah yeah well, I think the, 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 the biggest step was this uh, marketplace that allows anyone to contribute and uh, uh, because of course there are a lot of modules that might be local or yeah, as a local specific. Yep. Uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> yeah, right. uh, we the are in the calling. meeting room, and uh, someone was calling in that meeting. Um, so yeah, that's that's really great, uh, and um, and it's it's I must say it's very we we are also uh, partners with other uh, uh, commercial uh, open source products, and uh, I'm. I'm I'm very amazed at uh, how uh, how uh, community dedicated uh, the library is, and it's very uh, yeah it's more open source oriented than uh, some others. Yeah, it's funny because sometimes people say I mean like you know pure open source people will say that we're not open source because we've got this enterprise edition and it's a conflict of interest. But uh, I think in library's case. Um, you know, I know, well, I know, and it's but it's it's a constant uh, uh, chore to explain that um, you know we're not in it. We're not in it. And Brian Chan was on earlier. We're not in it to get bought. We don't have you know these grand visions of some huge awesome uh, uh, company that's going to be millions of or thousands of employees and so forth. So um, yeah, so that's that's what we're in it for. Is the is is you know. Building something that is useful for a lot of people and can help people in other areas of life, not just I, I think know, building websites. Really, yeah, there's one thing that makes uh, the world difference is uh, the um, the fact that you can buy uh, enterprise ed edition. Well, there's there's limited uh, uh, version that is uh, actually uh, very affordable, and uh, even if you have the support for one or two years. You can stop at any time and continue using that enterprise edition without having uh, the new patches and the new uh, features, of course. But that is very important for most of the customers we uh, uh, we have. It's because if you have to, well, if by buying an enterprise edition, so if by uh, using the support, um, and you will be to uh, how to say that um, when you stop. Paying it if you have to go back to the community edition uh, because of the the restriction on the on the on the license uh, that would be uh, that would be very problematic uh, for uh, for for the end user for the customer. Yeah. Yep. So that's that's great actually. I I, I don't know any other uh, commercial open source uh, company that uh, that offers that. For oh, their cool. Customer. I mean, yeah. That's that's we can't. I'm constantly saying, you know, if you can't afford it or you don't need enterprise edition you can go into production with the community edition uh, it, it's it's production ready when we release it we assume it is production ready so that might not always be the case in retrospect but the point is is that we don't use we don't put CE out there as like a crappy version of EE and make you buy EE so uh, okay so let's move on um, so the idea with this game Sven is it's called closest to the pin and Ray Auger, our resident Canadian developer, is going to be my assistant. And uh, so, Sven, you need to pick, you need to choose two of your team members to uh, to play this game. 
Uh, well, I'm not Canadian actually. If I'm from Switzerland, so if is it Canada, you better, Canada? It's Canadian. Or... Yes, it is. Uh, well, I look. At... <laughs> you know what? Canada is is not very uh, very good in uh, in open source. I mean, uh, open source is not very well. Uh, it's, it's not teach at school, so uh, actually all the people that are in my uh, in the room, uh, none of them are from Canada. We, we, can, we can try. We have uh, people from Spain, from Kazakhstan, for from Russia, from uh, France. But I'm from Switzerland. Uh, but, uh, well. It's as, as long as your game. Uh, so I think the good thing about this game is you don't have to be right. You just have to be close. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> two others, two other members. Uh, just yeah, two total. You can be one of them if you wish. So it's a quiz game. I'm going to ask two people the same questions, and we're going to see who gets closer. That's good. If I don't have to be part of uh, of the game, that's good. Then I yeah. can involve others. I'm going to uh, to take uh, Marcos. <laughs> He's trying to leave the, the room. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, who's uh, in Canada for uh, some long time? Uh, yeah, so whoever's been here the longest. <laughs> I uh, oh, I have Christoph here. Christoph. <laughs> he he was looking uh, through the through the window. We need you, <laughs> Christoph. There's a game uh, about Canada. <laughs> best, uh, you can join. So me. Christoph and, and who's I the other player? Hi, hey, Christoph. Who, who's the other player? Ah, it's me. Hello, Marcos. It's Marcos. He's from Spain. Okay. Okay. So, Marcos, you have to step out of the room for this really? game. You have to, and I'm going to ask Christoph. Okay. Yeah, and then <laughs> we'll call him back in when we're done. Okay. So there is a streaming on my laptop if you want to hear. <laughs> okay. So Ray OJ, he's going to record your answers to these questions. He's Ray. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Ray is on there. Hey, Ray, can you hear everybody? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going. You're going to give two minutes to. Uh, uh, actually, you know what? We're going to um, give you three minutes because last time we did this, we ran out of time. So three minutes. So the idea is, I'm going to ask you a question, and if you know the answer or you want to guess, you can do the guess. Otherwise, you can pass, and then you can go on to the next question. Um, and the idea is, you can come back later to answer the questions that you've passed on. Okay, and each question, you don't have to be correct, you just have to be close. So, and they're all questions, the answers are all numbers. So you can imagine that uh, whoever is, uh, gets the closest will win. So, I'm gonna ha I have an online timer here. So just, I'm gonna start ask asking you questions and you can just tell me the answer or say pass. Are you ready, Christoph? Yes, ready. Okay, here we go. Question one. After the war of 1812 between the U.S. and Britain, the United States and Canada each saw its self-perceived victory as an important foundation of its growing nationhood. How many months did the conflict last? Uh, pass. You know, Ice hockey. Here. We don't hockey. really mind about story. <laughs> with... <laughs> Ice hockey first appeared in 1920 Olympic Games in Antwerp, where Canada took the gold medal. How many goals did Canada score throughout their three-game campaign? The three games campaign. Yeah, how many goals in those three games did they score? Total goals. Twelve. Ice fishing, ice fishing is a popular Canadian pastime. In 2013, Lake Simcoe hosted an ice fishing tournament. How far apart must each angler's drilled hole be? How far apart do the holes have to be in feet? You know, in, in Canada, we are a civilized country. We, we use met metric system. <laughs> OK, in, me in meters. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, can you quickly repeat the... Uh, yeah, how far apart do the holes have to be in ice fishing during this competition? Half a meter. Okay. Beer is the most popular alcoholic beverage in Canada in terms of both volume and dollar value. How many liters did Canadians consume in 2010? Total leaders across the entire country. 70. Say 70? 
I, I, I would guess 17. 17 what? The people in Sudbury drinks very much more than in here in Quebec. A total number of liters across the entire country. A total number? Okay, not per uh, person? No, no, no. Oh. Uh, 33 million. Plus. Yeah, multiply by 7. For a year? Yeah. Il y a 3 litres par 100 millions, 1 milliard, 1 billion. The Canadian progressive rock band Rush will be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this year. How many fans attended their largest concert in Brazil in 2003? No, we passed, but we recommend you that you listen to Rocket Fire, which is a very famous Canadian Montreal band. <laughs> Curling is a sport in which players... Oh, time's up. Okay. Right. Uh, you know curling is playing in Newfoundland. <laughs> <laughs> we play hockey. <laughs> I had questions about hockey, curling, baseball, and... Uh, uh, it, 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 oh, my God. There are very tough questions. Uh, well, yeah, yeah you got to guess. You can't just... You don't have the problem. Canada is a some so big country that... <laughs> well, what's up? What, what do you have to do? So I'm going to ask you, uh, you can stay, Christoph, as well. Uh, I'm going to ask you questions, and you tell me the answer. Uh, you don't have to be right. You just have to be close. So. Yeah, I need to get closer. Yeah, let's go. Are you ready? Yeah. OK. Question one. After the War of 1812 between the US and Britain, the United States and Canada saw its self-perceived victory as an important foundation for its growing nationhood. How many months did this conflict last? Uh, I don't know. Five? Ice hockey first appeared in the 1920 Olympic Games in Antwerp where Canada took the gold medal. How many goals did Canada score throughout the three-game campaign? Two. Ice fishing is a popular Canadian pastime. In 2013, Lake Simcoe held an ice fishing tournament. How far apart in meters must each angler's drilled hole be? Oh my god, in meters. I don't know, 20? Beer is the most popular alcoholic beverage in Canada in terms of both volume and dollar value. How many liters did Canadians consume in 2010, total yeah. across the whole country? Ah, in, to in total? Yes. Uh, one billion? <laughs> the Canadian progressive rock band Rush will be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this year. How many fans attended their largest concert in Sao Paulo, Brazil in 2003? A quarter million. Lacrosse is popular across all of Canada. In what year was lacrosse declared the national game of Canada? Uh, in the 1960. The music of Canada has reflected the diverse influences that have shaped the country. In what year did Neil Young's album Harvest Moon win its first Juno Award for Album of the Year? <laughs> Marcos, 2000. 2000, 2000. I didn't he, was, he was not born. Okay, 19, <laughs> 1970. Curling is a sport in which players slide stones across a sheet of ice towards a target area. The 2002 Canadian film Men with Brooms centers on this sport. What percentage of the film's gross originated in Canada? Like, how much money did the film make in Canada, uh, percentage-wise? 80. 80 percent. Baseball has a long history in Canada where it's one of the most popular sports. In 1969, the Montreal Expos began playing in Jari Park Stadium. What is the capacity of this stadium? Um, 15,000. Hockey Night in Canada has began transmitting Saturday night hockey games of the Toronto Maple Leafs beginning in November 1931 via radio. Yes. Approximately how many listeners tuned in to the first broadcast? One million. <laughs> right. That's it. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, yes. 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 you should you should prepare for the next one some questions, especially for Quebec. <laughs> really? Yeah. Is, is Quebec know. a separate country? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's what they want. <laughs> we won't answer that question. <laughs> I'm I'm going to claim American ignorance. <laughs> Oh man. Okay. Uh, so Ray, do you have the answers? I mean, do you I have? Do. The, uh, did you record them? Okay. So the first question between uh, how long did the War of eighteen twelve last? Uh, let's see. Who? 
What was who, Christoph? Who was the the guy playing? Yeah, uh, Christoph. Um, yes. Who is the other gentleman here? We forgot He's his Marcos. name. Marcos. Marcos. Okay. Marcos. So, uh, so uh, let's Marcos see. said so, five. Marcos yes. said five. Christoph, Christoph said so pass. So the, the <laughs> so the answer is thirty-two. Oh. So Marcos wins. The next game, uh, question was, the, I found this one actually really surprising. The number of goals scored by Canada in the 1920 Olympic Games in three games. So Marcos said... Two, and, and Christoph said 12. Answer was 29. So uh, Christoph wins that one. Yeah, it was crazy. One of the games was like 25 to 0. I, was like, I didn't think that was possible in hockey. Come on. <laughs> uh, the next question is about the uh, ice fishing holes. So uh, Marcos said... 20 meters. And Christoph said? Half a meter. Answer is 30 feet. feet. So, so around 10 meters. I would say about 10 meters, yeah. Yep, yep. So, so Marcos. I'm, Marcos, okay. No, I'm no, closest. I think I half so a next... meter, half meter to, it even a to meter? 10, <laughs> it's 9 meter and a half. And yeah. 10 meters to 20, it's 10 meters. So I'm Yeah, the... you're right. Yeah, yeah. he's right. He's so right. who won? Who Christoph won? <laughs> It's a mile of millimeters. <laughs> it's our guesstimation. Okay, next question about beer. So uh, Marco said billion, one billion, and Christoph one billion. Really? The answer is two point three billion liters. I won oh. <laughs> So yeah, Marcos wins now. <laughs> okay, uh, so that's a tie. So next question, and Ray, are you keeping track of who wins each one? Yep. Okay, so the next one is about uh, the number of fans at the Rush concert in Brazil. So Marcos said... 250,000. And quarter Christoph million. said... A pass. 60,000 is the answer. So, yeah, so Marcos wins. Uh, next one is about lacrosse being declared the national game of Canada. Uh, Christoph said... 19... Oh, okay. Christoph didn't make it there. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So the answer is 1856. I'm I'm guessing Marcos wins this whole thing. Marcos wins. So far, he's got three, and Christoph only has two. So by by this point, yeah, yeah. Marcos has already won. So Neil Young won in uh, 1994. Uh, the film's gross of the men in broom, men with brooms, 100 percent. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, 100 yeah. percent. So it was all. <laughs> Canadian made and Canadian consumed. Uh, the next one is about the capacity of the uh, Montreal Expo Stadium, 28,456. And then finally, the hockey night, the first number of people that tuned into the first radio broadcast was 100,000. So thank you guys for playing. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you, I hope it was fun. Thank and thanks, for, uh, thanks to Sven and the rest of the team for presenting. Um, so we're very happy to have you guys on board in our community as well as uh, Life Free Partners. So um, yeah, we will see you guys around. Thank, thank you very much, and uh, good luck for staying uh, another <laughs> staying uh, like 15 hours. <laughs> with my, uh, yeah, exactly. I better not get any beer. So. Yeah. And Ray, Ray, we are waiting for you in, uh, in Montreal once. Yeah, I was just talking about that in, uh, on IRC, and uh, someone was asking me, when. Uh, you know, if well, I had we'll ever been to the office, but yeah, we definitely have to do something. We'll organize that. Perfect. Yeah, let okay. me know. Bye bye. See you. Awesome. See you guys. See you guys. See you guys.